Hello everyone, so for today's video, we will be discussing the second type of our partial fraction, which is the repeated linear factor. So in this video, uh, we have here an example, evaluate um, integral of x squared minus 7 dx all over x cubed minus 12x plus 16. So as you can see, uh, our uh, denominator here is in the exponent of cube, meaning to say uh, we need to transform this one into a linear factor. Now, if you calculate our denominator here and find a factor, you will come up with x minus 2, the factor of x minus 2 squared, and x plus 4. So as you can see, this one is a linear factor, but in uh, in the exponent of 2, meaning to say this one should be interpreted as a repeating linear factor. So that being said, we can also rewrite our equation by uh, x squared minus 7 dx all over our factors here. We have x minus 2 squared and then we have the x plus 4. So the same process as the, the as the previous videos that we have. We just have to copy this one as a normal equation. We have x squared minus 7 all over x minus 2 squared. And then we have the x plus 4. So now we will be uh, uh, replacing our numerator with any constant variable. So we have here, for example, we have the a. Uh, usually a uppercase letters are the ones we will be using for replacing our numerator. So as, as you can see, this one is a repeating linear factor. So meaning to say you have to put the first factor first without the power of 2. So we have x minus 2. And then on the second fraction, you have to put it uh, with its exponent. So we have the x minus 2. And then we have the squared. And then the last factor, which is x plus 4. So basically, uh, for example, if you have a uh, exponent here as 3, you need to write a x minus 2 plus a x minus 2 squared plus b over x minus 2 cubed. So depending on the exponents that you have here, that is also the number of repetition that you will uh, use. So in this case, you just again multiply both sides with the denominator. So we have the x minus 2 squared, and then we have the x plus 4. Now, if you multiply this one, this can be canceled, meaning to say what we have left is x squared minus 7. And for this fraction, uh, 1 x minus 2 can be canceled, so there's still 1 left, so we have a x minus 2 and then we have the other x plus 4 plus uh, this can be cancelled since this is squared so we have b times the remaining x plus 4 plus the other one this can be cancelled so we have the c as multiplied with x minus 2 squared. So afterwards, we just have to uh, simplify this one by uh, distributive property or by expanding our binomial. So we have the x squared minus 7 is equivalent to a times this one, which is equivalent to x squared plus 2x 
minus 8. Then for this one, we have the b times x plus 4. This one, expanding our binomial, we have c, x squared minus 4, x plus 4. Afterwards, we can again distribute our constants here. So we have the x squared minus 7 is equivalent to a x squared plus a times 2x, that's 2 a x minus 8 a plus we have the b x plus 4 b plus c x squared minus 4 c x plus 4 c and then afterwards, um, this one, you can simply find the coefficients of our variables of x. So we have to find the coefficient of our highest exponent. We can put here x squared. From the left side of our equal sign, we have the, the coefficient of x squared here is 1, right? And then for the other um, equations we have the coefficient of x squared from this term is a and then basically just have to find the same power and then find their coefficient so there's no other x squared here uh, other than plus c so that is our coefficients for the uh, x squared. Now we also have to find the coefficient of our x or ra x raised to power of 1. From the left side of our equal sign, there's no co uh, variable uh, raised to 1. So meaning to say you just have to put 0. Now on the other side of our equal sign, we have the 2ax. So you just have to copy the 2a. And then we have the b, so that's plus b. And then for this one, we have the minus 4c. So uh, this will be our equation number 1. This is our equation number 2. And then we also need to find our x raised to 0 or the constant. Since x raised to 0, that's 1, so meaning to say we also have to find the coefficients of our constants. So from the, the left side of our equal sign, we have the constant negative 7. And then for this one, we have negative 8a. That is a constant since it has no variable. We also have the plus 4b and the plus 4c. So this is now our third equation. So from the first equation, we can come up, we can isolate either a or c so that we can um, substitute the values of either a or c to the other equations that we have. So if we isolate c here, we can get 1 minus a. So meaning to say, from this, uh, from this equation, we can substitute the value of c as 1 minus, one, 1 minus a. So if we write that 1, 0 is equal to 2a plus b minus 4. And then the c, which is 1 minus a. So we have 0 is equal to... 2a plus b minus 4 plus 4a. And then if we isolate another vari variable here or another constant 
uh, unknown here, we can get either A or either B. So if we uh, if we uh, add up this term, since this is the same, we have 0 is equal to 6A plus B minus 4. So 4 minus B is equivalent to 6A. Now, to isolate our A, we can divide both sides by 6 so that we have now a new value of our A, which is 4, which is A is equivalent to 4 over 6, that is 2 thirds minus B over 6. Now, we can already um, substitute this one again to our third equation. So, we have negative 7 is equal to negative 8A plus 4. I'm sorry, we need to substitute our A here. So, we have negative 8. And then the value of our A, which is 2 thirds minus B over 6. So any process that you know that can come up to the value, to the, the constant value of our variables here is fine. So long as you get the correct value of our A, B, and C. Um, you can also copy the process that I have. But if you have better process, that's also fine. So we have the 4B and then the 4. And then we know that C is equal to 1 minus A. So we have here negative 7 is equal to negative 16 over 3 minus 4 thirds B plus 4b plus 4 minus 4a. Now, we need to isolate b so that we can get a value, uh, we can get an exact value. But we still have a here, so I mean to say we can substitute the value of a. So we have negative 7 is equal to negative 16 over 3 minus 4 thirds b plus 4b plus 4 minus 4 times our a which is 2 thirds minus b over 6. So we are already starting to find the light here since, as you can see, uh, the only constant left is our B. So if you uh, calculate this one, you'll get the equivalent value of B, which is equivalent to negative one half. Now, after you get a constant value of one variable that we are looking, you can already start um, substituting this to the other uh, num constant numbers that we have here. So we have A is equal to 2 thirds minus 1 half, negative 1 half, which is B, all over 6. So we have A is equivalent to 3 fourths. And for the C, since A is 3 fourths, C is equal to 1 minus 3 fourths, meaning to say C is equivalent to one fourth. Now we already have the values that we need to integrate our partial fractions. So having our uh, values here, we can already start integrating this one. So we have um, we have the integral of a, which is three-fourths, you can put that outside the integral sign, and then the dx, which is all over x minus 2, right? As what we had earlier from here, we have x minus 2. And then for the b, 
we can, the value of b is negative 1 half, so we have negative 1 half integral of dx all over x minus 2 squared. And then for the value of c, we have plus 1 fourth integral of dx all over x plus 4. So we now have this partial fractions that we that is ready for integration. Afterwards, we can already integrate this one. Now we let u as equal to x minus 2. And then derivative of u is equal to dx. For this one, uh, our u is also x minus 2. And then the derivative of u is also dx and then the same as this one. u is equal to x plus 4 and the derivative of this is still the same, which is dx. Now, integrating, we have du over u that is equivalent to ln u. So, meaning to say we have 3 fourths of ln of u, which in, case, in this case, our u is x minus 2. And for this one, we uh, since it has the, the denominator has a power that is more than 1, meaning to say uh, we can put that in the numerator and then we have 1 half and then we can use the power formula, which is u raised to negative 2 plus 1, that is negative 1 all over negative 1 plus the 1 fourth ln of x plus 4. And we just have to replace our original value for the u. So we have 3 fourths ln of x minus 2 negative times negative that is positive one half and then since this is a negative exponent meaning to say we can put our uh, numerator at the denominator so we have here uh, u which is x minus 2 plus our one fourth ln of x plus 4 and we almost forgot to put plus c here. So this is now our final answer. So again, I hope you understand our discussion for this uh, lesson. And please subscribe and like my videos for more videos relating to integral calculus. Now, I will be pasting here a much clearer answer for this uh, example so that it's so that's it. And I hope you like our discussion for today and please don't hesitate to comment or reply from this video in our LMS. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.